Take it to the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you are glad just to be in the presence of God on tonight? Hallelujah. What a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs to bear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. I'm grateful tonight uh, just to be in the presence of God's people. Uh, I'm grateful uh, just for this great and amazing ministry, Bethel Worship Center Church International. Come on, won't you bless God with me for this great church? And while you're blessing God, won't you thank God for these great leaders, Pastors Herman and Pastor Shanika Dixon. We're grateful. Hallelujah. 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 God. Surely the Lord is good in this place. I don't know about you, but I'm glad. I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time to all, all of our, uh, all of the clergy, all of the pastors, pastor, pastors' vans. They were up here and praying and opening up and pastor. I said, man, he done preached. I said, he just all in the message. I said, come on, God. That's how you do. You know how to orchestrate. I said, what was burning in his heart was burning on mine too. So I'm grateful. I am grateful to God just for his goodness uh, in this place on tonight. Again, to, to every pastor in the building, I'm grateful uh, for your presence, all of the ministers um, and, and just everyone who is here. I'm grateful for such an amazing ministry, such an amazing, amazing church who understands uh, just the call of God and they're sensitive to the voice of God and sensitive to the presence of God. I am so grateful just for God's almighty divine presence being here with us on tonight from, from the opening all of intercessory prayer all the way through. Hallelujah. I am just glad to be in the service one more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My granny would have said he didn't have to let me live, but I'm glad to be in this service one more time. I'm thankful. Uh, there are some who have come with us. I want to acknowledge Redeemed Church. You're in the building tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm grateful grateful for them hallelujah all of them who have come i'm grateful uh just for the van family they drove up they we caravan they followed they came on in thankful for the simmons family who met us here we're grateful for for sister kimmy thank god for her and Brother Anthony drove us on in. So grateful for him. And Minister Andre Brinson, he's with us. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Hallelujah. And to my baby girls, they're here tonight. So I'm grateful for my baby girls. Nephew Josh, I see him peeking his head over there. And so I'm grateful for Kirsten, for Christian. Buddy's not with us. He's got a baseball tournament tomorrow morning. And so we said, well, brother, go ahead and we'll, we'll handle this. You can handle that. So, uh, but his prayers are certainly with us. And to my lovely bride, I thank God. I thank God for this woman here. She is the teeth in my smile. I say it all the time. Y'all already know, without her, I'd be a snag -a tooth mess. I tell you, you don't seem big mama take her teeth out and her face suck in. That's what she does for me. She makes me look better. She brings structure to everything that I do, and I'm grateful for her. We've been doing it a long time. Hallelujah. 26 years together. This year, we celebrate 21 years of marriage. And listen, she get fine about a second. She
she get fine about a second. Y'all know she got it like I like it. So hallelujah. That is the word. I'm in I'm in Song of Solomon right now. You just I'm gonna get to the rest of the text. You just you just let me work Song of Solomon. Hallelujah. I'm working on something. Hallelujah. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Uh, I love the love. Deep down, uh, I look. I look. I look like everything is okay. But I came to tell y'all, all the way from intercessory prayer to praise and worship, I was. I was glad we got a moment to sit down because my sock was under my heel in this Jordan one, and it was tearing me up. I said, Lord, I can't preach like this. I put the wrong socks on. So I had to take a minute and grab my sock. Pastor Shinika said, you need some help? Pastor Herman said, you're right. I got it. I just, I just needed to get this ankle sock above my heel. We weren't going to make it tonight. We weren't going to make it if I couldn't get that sock. <laughs> Hallelujah. Am, am I if I take this off? Okay, thank you. I just needed a moment just to grab it. No, it's good right here. It was it was probably going to be more distracting uh, to me. To me, I'm, I, I, I love, I love, I love the Lord. <laughs> I love God's presence. I love God's people, and I love the Spirit of God that's in this place. There's such such a sweet spirit here, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful for a church that is birthed and anchored in prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I, I just need you all uh, to help me. Uh, the atmosphere has been charged all night. And so I, I just need you to help me. I believe uh, there, there, there's, there's another unlocking in this atmosphere tonight. If, if you're 25 years old and under, 25 years old and under, uh, all the way down to uh, the, the, the smallest baby in the room. If you're 25 and under, if you could do me a favor and just begin to clap your hands. Just clap your hands for me. Clap your hands. While you're clapping now, 25 and under, just open your mouth and say something. Give them a hallelujah. Give them a thank you. Now, while you're, now keep going, keep going, keep going, my 25 and unders. Now, 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 my 45 and unders, join my 25s and just clap your hands. Now, help them. Now, open your mouth and say something. Now, if you're 105 and under, won't you join my 45s? And under? Yes, God, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you. Bless your name, Jesus. Oh, Father, we glorify you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, we come to lift your name. Lord, we've come to magnify you. God, we've come to glorify you. God, we thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we exalt your name. Father, we magnify your name tonight. We glorify your name. Hallelujah. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. God, we glorify you now. We magnify you now. Oh God, we thank you. God, we charge the atmosphere. We charge the atmosphere with praise. We charge the atmosphere with your glory. Let the weight of your glory, let the weight of your glory rest here. Lord, let your Shekinah rest here. Oh Father, we thank you. Lord, our prayer tonight is fresh oil and new wine. Fresh oil and new wine. Fresh oil and new wine. Oh God. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. For fresh anointing. Yes, let the wind of God blow in this place tonight. Stir the atmosphere. Lord, we thank you. The atmosphere has been charged all night with prayer and with praise. The birthing place of miracles, of signs, of wonders, of breakthrough, of deliverance, of healing, of of freedom oh god we give you glory hallelujah 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 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Um, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Uh, 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 oh, Father, we thank you. We thank you for the blood tonight. Uh, we thank you for the blood tonight. Uh, wash over us with your blood. Uh, we thank you for the blood tonight. Oh, God. Oh, God, we glorify you. Oh, God, we thank you. And we magnify your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Oh, God, we glorify you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that there's none like you. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Oh, God, we give you the glory. We bless your holy name. And we honor you, God. We reverence you. Oh, hallelujah. We reverence you. Hallelujah. 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 God, we glorify you. Yes, Lord.
of the storm, I won't be silent. When trouble is raging, I won't be silent. When the storms of life are raging, I will not be silent. No. Oh, when sickness shows its head, I won't be silent. I'll keep a worship in my heart.
thank you. We magnify you, oh Jesus. To the great and living King, we give you glory, Jesus. Father, we magnify your name. We've come tonight just to give you the worship. Come tonight to give you all the glory. We don't have the answers. We don't know how the way is going to be made. We may not even have the resource or the provision, but what we have, we give, and that's our worship, Jesus. Father, we give you our worship. of his grace if you know that you're only standing here because of the mercy of God if you know that if it had not been for the Lord my God who was on your side hallelujah you Lord you are worthy hallelujah hallelujah I don't know about you but I'm just glad that God is still on the throne. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm grateful. I'm grateful again just for God's presence. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you just for giving me moments uh, just to get myself together. Um, I've been doing this for 30 years and I'm always nervous. And so <laughs> I just got to settle in and find my way. <laughs> and so worship always helps me settle in. 
and find my way. My late granddaddy told me, he said, but he said, if you ever stand up to deliver the word and you're not nervous, he said, you sit back down because you're about to be in your flesh. He said, because anytime we depend on the presence and the spirit of God, he said, it's unnerving. He said, because we have to be sensitive to what God wants to do. So if there's ever been a time I'm not nervous, then I'm nervous about not being nervous, then I get nervous. <laughs> but I'm grateful. I'm grateful for God, God's presence. Uh, I want to honor the assignment on tonight. Uh, if you'll open your Bibles to Mark chapter number 11. Mark chapter 11. I just believe, God, that whatever you came in here with tonight, I don't know what just happened to my iPad, but somehow, dear children of mine, it pulled up Roblox. Roblox. I don't know, that ain't what I'm preaching. Uh, <laughs> it is. It is a roadblock indeed. But freedom starts here. Very, very often we see and we read this scripture and we get excited about verse 24. Therefore, I tell you. Everything you pray and ask for, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. We shout off of that, but then we kind of side-eye verse 25. Start mean mugging verse 25 and it says, oh, and whenever you stand praying, you know, asking for whatever, you, whatever it is you ask for and believe God that you're going to receive. Whenever you stand praying that, uh, if you have anything against anyone, Forgive them. Don't, don't, don't forgive them. And before you say, well, uh, I don't know about that. That's too hard. It doesn't stop. There's a comma. And this, this is, this is, uh, this, this is a condition, right? So uh, Kirsten, would that make that a prepositional phrase? Uh -huh. That's my English teacher right there. She helps me. She helps me. Uh, so there's this preposition or there, it's a dependent clause. That's what it is. A dependent clause. She's teaching me good. She's teaching me good. It's a dependent clause. It says if you have anything against anyone, forgive them. Dependent clause. So that. This is what is dependent on. So that your father in heaven will also forgive you your wrongdoing. See, all too often we roll up on God and we have this unforgiveness in our heart and we act like, yeah, but God, you don't know what they did to me. And he said, no. We, we talked about it in verse 25, saying whenever you stand praying, if you have I was about to say, now wait a minute. We just went over this lesson. <laughs> if you have against anyone, mm, forgive them. But what about anything, anyone? But what about when they, anything, and anyone? No, but you don't know how devastating it, anything anyone lay hands on yourself and say anything, anything. and anyone, anyone. So, that so that my father, my father. In, heaven in heaven can forgive me also, forgive me also. of my wrongdoing. my wrongdoing 
See, it, 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 doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't stop and leave it ambiguous. He said, no, you were wrong. Anything, anyone, so that your Father in Heaven can forgive you would have been cool right there because we would have put, if I did anything wrong, but Lord, I don't need, no. He said, of your wrongdoing. I said, you low down. You dirty. <laughs> he said, bruh. <laughs> you're, you're wrong. We've all been guilty of wrongdoing. There's a verse. There's a verse I want to I want to throw in here uh, because I believe it's going to serve us uh, in an understanding uh, where God is trying to get us tonight concerning forgiveness, and that is Ecclesiastes seven eight through ten, Christian Standard Bible. Again, it says the end of a matter is better than its beginning. A patient spirit better than a proud spirit. Don't let your spirit rush to be angry. Verse 9 says, For anger abides in the heart of fools. Don't say, Why were the former days better than these? Since it is not wise of you to ask this. There is a freedom that comes with finally getting to the place of forgiveness. But I need you to know that freedom starts here. It starts at this place of us reconciling our hearts with God and getting free of any unforgiveness. Uh, there are many studies, many studies talk about uh, where doctors and psychiatrists and psychologists uh, say that people who forgive are healthier than people who do not forgive. Researchers have also found evidence stating that if someone has a heart of thanksgiving, it adds longevity and depth to their life. What these reports are saying is that forgiveness is good for us. <laughs> this is something that God says through his word and he's been saying all along. The question that we have to ask ourselves today is, how do I arrive at this place of forgiveness? Number one, I'm, I'm, I'm going to drop a couple things on you real quick and I'm going to get out of your way. Uh, number one is, don't be afraid. Repeat after me, class. Hey, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. If you're going to arrive at the place of forgiveness, you cannot be afraid. What am I saying? Fear will paralyze you. And keep you from acting on God's word. Listen, why do we say that? We, we see it in the word of God. He says, if you have anything against anyone, but we in our finite minds and in our human way of thinking, we have conditions. It's what we call conditional forgiveness. I can forgive you as long as you don't i can forgive you as long as you don't cross this line in the sand if you cross that line then it is unforgivable there's no way i could ever forgive anybody of that and we make these inner vows uh, and make these conditions uh, but the bible says anything and anyone uh, part of the challenge for us then is uh, how we move. Some of us here claiming to be devout followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, but the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, God the Father and the Son, they all looking at us like, uh, but you moving funny. <laughs> you, 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 you moving funny. It's like, it's like Celie, when she was still a young girl and had just married Mr. in the color purple, and she showed up at the general store, and the lady asked her to hold the baby, and she said, I think she mine. She looked like she mine. <laughs> and she <laughs> tried to lift up, because I sold Olivia on all her diapers. God looking at us like, I think they mine. They look like they mine. I, I, I so believe her on all their hearts. But they move funny. 
you, 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 you moving funny. See, the challenge is that it can be fearful to launch out in forgiveness. Why? Because of what happened. What they did to you. Everybody doesn't know all the details, but you know, you know the details of what they did and how they did and what they did. And you like, oh, and so it can be fearful, but by faith, you can. Here is the greatest fear that many have. The greatest fear that many of us have, if you're honest with me tonight, is that the offender will go unpunished. So what we do then is we convince ourselves that if I hold them in the prison of my heart, then they won't get away with it. There is nothing further from the truth. All that does is keep us bound and imprisoned in our own jail of unforgiveness. <sighs> Don't be afraid. Number two, number two, number two, reference the past don't return to it. Oh, here, here's what I'm saying. You've got to remember what you saw God do in the past and he is well able to do it in your current situation and the future. Why do I say that? Ecclesiastes, that's what they said. They said, uh, he said, no, 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 no. Don't you say, don't you dare say that the former years uh, were better than this time. What he's dealing with there is a heart issue. And all too often we say, man, if it was just, if they wouldn't have, if they didn't. If they, do you know that God is sovereign enough to take your pain, your tribulation, your storm, your circumstance, uh, the deep, dark death and dearth of the situation and still say all things work together for the good of them who love God and who are the called according to his purpose. Reference the fast, but don't you return to it. Remember what you saw, God. Do He's well able. Oh, can I can I just insert this right here? That this 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 is a season for your testimony. That you should be able to look and say what God has done before, he can do it again. This is a season for you to rehearse your testimony. Some of you have gone and you put your testimony on a trophy case. I'm here to tell you tonight by the spirit of God and the Holy Ghost deputization to take it off the shelf and reactivate your testimony and say, listen, let me tell you what God did for me and they overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their I'm in the book I'm in the book Bible says in Matthew 15 and 8 these people honor me with their lips but their hearts are far from me God reference the past don't 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 touch it number three number three number three number three God then is for us and he is with us Joshua 1 and 9 Joshua 1 and 9 says have I not commanded you to be strong and courageous do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go here's what I need you to understand that in the midst of of working through forgiveness at every stage of transition God addresses fear why because he knows it's a real threat to us fear will cause you to believe something is far worse than it is my baby girl, Kirsten, she told me the other week, she said, Daddy, Daddy, uh, I, I couldn't find Buddy, and I couldn't find you. And so she said, and I knew Creed, our puppy. Creed won't going to do nothing. She said, so I had to kill the spider all by myself. And she said, Daddy, I did it. I did it. I said, girl, you go. That's what I'm talking about. No spider better come up in your room. That's 
she was excited about the spider. Why? Because she was fearful of the spider. Now, the funny thing is, if you sit down and have a conversation with her, she can tell you anything and everything about spiders. She says, I like knowledge of spiders. I like knowing about spiders, but I don't like them in my room. She said, oh, no, you're doing too much. <laughs> but she she confronted a fear but she said normally I would have had to get daddy or would have had to get brother she said but you know I killed daddy I killed that spider myself yeah. fear will have us thinking something is far worse than it is now, last night, there was a real big spider, and she said, uh, buddy, you need to get that. <laughs> she wasn't fooling with that one. It was too big and too fast. She said, no, the one in my room was small. <laughs> she ain't graduated yet. But here's the thing. Fear will cause us to believe something is far worse than it is. <laughs> uh, truth is, some of us are harboring unforgiveness and it's turned now it's turned sour and sour unforgiveness turns into bitterness and some of us have had the bitterness so long that that's done turned to and it's done molded and it's got green, white, and black fur all over it. You know them strawberries you left in the bottom drawer that you said you was going to cut up and eat and you just missed the due date on them and the bitterness has turned to anger. And then the anger has sat there so long like the oranges that were next to the strawberries that done got dented in and now they went from real soft to hard. Because the anger has turned to unbelief. And we think, oh God, but they owe me. I can't forgive them because, because they owe me. Listen, I'm, 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 I'm here to tell you tonight that if we never learn to forgive, that our life will be weighted down. And we will, the, the, the word of the Lord says, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset us. Why? So that we may run with patience the race that is set before us. Whew. Here's what I need you to know. Why do we, why do we get to that place? Pastor Shanika, I believe we arrive at that place because it is the sin of this age. And the sin of this age is entitlement. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Uh, entitlement is the prison of the privileged. I'm going to say that twice and be right both times. Uh, entitlement is the prison of the privileged. So we feel entitled to our unforgiveness and don't realize uh, with all of our entitlement and our privilege of no, I'll never forgive them that you're in prison. You've imprisoned yourself. You can't experience true and lasting freedom because of what you feel you're owed. We've got to move and get past, get past this, this place of unforgiveness. Have you ever observed how little children play? And it's easy for them to forgive one another every day. I don't know what world war we on in the gray house in North Carolina between them younger two. But whatever one is on, by the end of the night, they playing with each other again, sleeping in each other's room, having to sleep over, playing the same thing they played the day before that caused the fight from yesterday. <laughs> Just for another world war to break out. But they forgive each other 
so easily. Most children, they're ready to apologize immediately, forget offenses, and get back into relationship with one another. However, as we grow older, we get real conditional. But the Bible says anything and anyone forgive but we get conditional and forgiving others kind of becomes an issue for us relationships at every level are broken they're shattered simply because many choose to continue on without forgiving those that offended them the bible gives us a good understanding of the kind of forgiveness that god extends to us and also clearly explains the kind of forgiveness that we must offer others. If I could, if I could call on a, a, a witness tonight, I would call Brother Joseph. In the 50th chapter of Genesis, talks about how Jacob dies, Israel. And then Joseph, his son, the, his, the, his other brothers say, listen, daddy did. And he going to get his revenge on us because we sold him to the Midianites. And then he wound up in Potiphar's house and Potiphar put him in jail. And then from there, somehow he wound up in prison longer than he should have been. But somehow he wound up in the palace and they were like, yeah, no, nah, this ain't going to go good. This ain't going to work out for us. And so... His brothers beg him to forgive them for all the wrong they had done to him around verses 16 through 18, I believe, is where that occurs. And he says, they say, listen, deal with us. Please forgive us. But the Bible says that Joseph dealt with them with kindness and generosity instead of repaying them for their cruelty. This is what the Lord is trying to get us to understand. Joseph responds at the climax of the story. He says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of me. He says, am I God? Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me. But God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so that I could save the lives of many people. No, do not be afraid. I will take care of you and your children. I've come to tell you tonight, you don't have to be afraid to forgive them. Because I believe what they intended to harm you. God has intended it all for your good. God has brought you to the place that you are in your life. So that you could save the lives of many people. Do you know that there's some life in the balance of not knowing Jesus waiting on you to forgive? And they need to know, no, I know what they did to you. I know how they violated you when you were a young child. I know, I know how they left you and how they walked. Up. Girl, I know how they cheated on your bruh. I know how she, she hollered at your partner and she was supposed to be your girl. Listen, I know how it went down. But listen, God is saying, I brought you to this position so that I could save the lives of many people. Joseph's reaction to his brothers it's confounding not because of what he says but because of what he does the Bible says Joseph weeps unconditionally he, he weeps and he extends this unconditional forgiveness to his brothers who had been cruel to him they did harm to him. And Joseph was able to do this only because, uh, I need you to get this, 
he saw things from God's perspective. I gave you three. Number four. Number four is, Lord, help me see it through your eyes. Mm. Part of our challenge forgiving is that we forget that it says, so that your Father in heaven can forgive you of your wrongdoing is the rest of verse 25. God says, I need you to forgive so that I can forgive you. Because as long as you have unforgiveness in your heart, everything you thought you repented for is still laid to your charge. I'm not talking religious, I'm talking Bible. He said, so that, which means if you don't, I can't. I'm sovereign enough to do it, but I will not. Your unforgiveness is not imprisoning you. Not imprisoning them. It's imprisoning you. Listen, why do we find it hard to forgive others? And I'm out of your way. You give me good five church minutes. Everybody at Redeem laughing because they know that's like 13. But you give me five good church minutes. Why do we find it hard to forgive others? Often, our egos hinder us from forgiving others. Sometimes, it's just that the hurt that caused, that was caused to us, is very deep and very painful. Then there are other times where um, we feel we are in the right and therefore justify our stance not to forgive. You know, I said it earlier, but you don't know what they did to me, justification statements. Sometimes we find it hard to forgive because the person who hurt us they don't feel any remorse about their wrongdoing. Some of us are hanging on to a transactional forgiveness and we are on the wrong end of the transaction. We think forgiveness has to be uh, purchased from us. No, forgiveness is to be paid by us. We're waiting for somebody to purchase forgiveness from us. And God is saying, no, that's not how it works. It's like Spectrum where we live. I don't know what kind of cable company y'all got or internet, but Spectrum, they bill you a month in advance and will shut your stuff off on the service that you hadn't yet used if you don't pay it. How that work? Is the Spectrum like that for real? I got a witness. I'm like, what? anyone? And anything, you heard it, Minister Tom. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I forgive Spectrum, Lord. <laughs> it was in my heart. It was in my heart. That came from a deep place. I got delivered tonight. Thank you, man of God. <laughs> but oftentimes we feel like, you know, we, God is saying your forgiveness you got to be like spectrum you got to pay that in advance <laughs> you pay a month ahead of time you give them the forgiveness for if they don't say I'm sorry even if they don't apologize do you know where I would be if I had waited for my life father to, to ask forgiveness of me and explain to me why he walked out on my very ill mother who suffered her entire life and didn't make it to 30 years old with epilepsy if I had waited because by the time I found him he was dead 10 years so can you imagine me holding on to this transactional Forgiveness on the wrong side. I'll forgive them when. No. I was probably what? I was in college. Me and Pastor Harmon were roommates. And it was, I, I came to the place where I was just like, hey, I, I just got to forgive that joker. 
<laughs> I said, because you know what? I don't know if I'm ever going to see him. And you know what? I, I can't go through life like this. And I had to forgive him in advance. Forgiveness. The word tells you how it goes down. Give it beforehand. For give. To give before it's required. To give before it's demanded. Forgive. We find it hard sometimes. Sometimes we find it hard because we haven't personally experienced the forgiveness that Jesus offers. And I'm here to tell you that's the greatest forgiveness that we could ever receive. We forgive because Christ forgave us. Bible says, Ephesians 4.32, be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. That in Christ, that's John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave, he for, he gave beforehand his son that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever will, future tense, believe in him, shall not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus paid our debt before the ransom note was due. We forgive others because Christ forgave us. Here's the thing. He only forgives us if we're willing to forgive others. Next thing, there's no limit to forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I got two more church minutes left. See, in the Old Testament, uh, the Hebrew law and the Jewish law was that you would forgive someone three times for what it is they did. There was three times uh, that you were to forgive them. But in Matthew 18, 21, 22, the Bible says Jesus is having this dialogue and it says, Lord, how often will I forgive my brother who sinned against me? And I forgive him. Peter comes up. He says, as many as seven times thinking the Jewish requirement is three times, but I'm going to go above and beyond and show Jesus how righteous I am. And I'm going to say, Lord, seven times? All ego filled, pompous, and pious. And Jesus said, Nah, bro. 70 times seven. He was like, What? Jesus was like, For sure. You <laughs> say, And 70 times seven, somebody just in their mind said, Okay, so I got to forgive him 490 times. No. That number equated an unlimited amount of times. An unlimited amount of times. That there is no limit to forgiveness. That's where we get on the struggle bus. We have trouble understanding that we skip. You ain't ever had devotion time where you read that verse. If your brother slap you on your left cheek, turn the right to him and left away saying, oh, Jesus, I feel so much better. You like, mm -hmm, no, that ain't for me. I ain't there yet in my walk. Let me go to the next verse. Because Jesus, if they slap me the way your boy set up, it's still a little bit of Detroit up in here. And I'm going to show you what we do in the D. <laughs> Say, we skip right on past that one. Because the way we set up. <laughs> and Jesus is saying, there's no limit. We can't get to, we can't get your other cheek. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Jesus is saying, there's, there's no limit to the forgiveness. Here's what. I was praying and I felt like the Lord just kind of showed this to me. And uh, one of the things Mark 11, 
25 just let me know that many of us are in a place and we're seeing testimonies break out and I believe I shared with our church uh, Tuesday morning prayer uh, that I believe that month is a mon May is a monumental month that there's a wind that's coming uh, a wind uh, almost like when we drove up I saw pop I saw pop major he was putting yard signs up uh, and I said oh they must have been blown over by the wind and the thing the very analogy I told our church I said it's like a storm comes and blows things over that are normally stationary the wind that I see in the spirit and what God is saying is that in this month hey God, in this month of Dre don't you do that uh, in this month in this month of May in this month of May he's, he sees things that are normally immovable by the wind of the spirit picking them up and moving them uh, there are some areas in your life where you have been stuck uh, some areas and some things that have not been advancing and I hear the Lord say that the month of May will bring a strong wind of God and it will be an advancing wind but the challenge for many of us is if we do not free and rid our hearts of unforgiveness that the wind will not blow in our direction some of us are wondering why we have unanswered prayers I'm here to tell you because we have grudges in our hearts uh, if we want to see God do it, uh, then we've got to be willing to forgive. Um, uh, if we have wronged someone, uh, it might mean that we need to humble ourselves and go apologize to them. Uh, if we are offended, if somebody offended us by word or deed, uh, stop waiting on them to come and apologize uh, and forgive them uh, and lay no fault to their charge. Uh, for some of us, uh, I believe even I hear the spirit of God saying this uh, that life for us uh, has been like an airplane on the runway uh, uh, at the gate uh, you've been trapped because you're waiting to take off uh, but I hear the Lord say you've got too much baggage uh, and the thing about a flight is uh, you can have enough fuel some of us oh God uh, have even gotten as far as the runway uh, but we've had to turn back uh, and go back to the gate um, because the weight is too excessive uh, and God is saying uh, listen if you try to take off with this weight um, you will be destroyed uh, before you complete your journey. Why? Because uh, you've got too much baggage uh, and the fuel and the baggage uh, won't make the journey. You won't be able to reach the right altitude. You won't be able to reach the right altitude. Uh, somebody is waiting to take off in their life. Uh, God has shown you his great and precious promises. Uh, you've received prophecy after prophecy. Uh, you've received word after word uh, you've received promise after promise uh -huh. and God is saying uh, that I know you're ready to take off uh, but you've got too much baggage uh, you can't use the fuel of faith uh, and the baggage of unforgiveness uh, either you've got to dump the fuel and not complete the journey or you've got to let go of the baggage uh, and make it to your destination uh, I've come to let you know tonight um, that I believe God is calling us higher I believe God is telling us it's time to raise the altitude it's time for us to raise the elevation and the only way the elevation is going to raise is if we get forgiveness in our hearts I believe some of us have been confused because we've got enough fuel you've got the training you've got the accolades you've got the tools you've got the resources you've got the finances You've got the business acumen. You've got the business plan. You've got everything lined up. But it hasn't taken off for you because you've got too much baggage. Somebody say, I'm letting the baggage go. Tonight I've come to tell you that unforgiveness is the baggage that is keeping many of us grounded. But tonight I believe by the Spirit of God that he's calling us to take flight tonight. Somebody, God, I hear the songwriter say, it's time for me to spread my wings and fly away. God, is there anybody here tonight that says, God, I'm going to give you the unforgiveness 
forgiveness. I trust you, God, with the bitterness of my heart. Father, I trust you with the brokenness. Father, I trust you with how they hurt me. God, I trust you with how they violated me. God, I trust you with the offense. God, I trust you with how they spoke to me. God, I trust you with how they spoke about me. Father, I trust you with how they talked about me. Father, I trust you with how they scandalized my name. Father, I trust you with how they gossiped about me. But Father, what I won't be found guilty of is taxiing on the runway when you've called me to take flight. Is there anybody here under the sound of my voice that says freedom starts here? That this is my night that I'm going to take flight because the Bible says he whom the sun sets free is free indeed where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty somebody ought to give God a praise for your freedom we thank you tonight God for the spirit of freedom for the spirit of liberty where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty hallelujah thank you God I'm gonna finish I'm gonna finish I got 38 seconds left on my minutes C.S. Lewis he says this he says to be a Christian means to forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in you. Standing feet all over the building. If you sit down, that means you want me to keep preaching. (laughs) To be a believer means that I forgive the inexcusable because God has forgiven the inexcusable in us. I told you we've got to see it from God's perspective, right? All too often we see ourselves as the victim. But far too many times in the story we're actually the villain. We're the offender. And no, we don't want to see ourselves like that. No. I'm I'm, I'm, going to make positive confessions. Nothing wrong with positive confessions as long as they're true. You shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. There is a freedom that there may we are missing because we are unaccepting of the truth. And the truth is God is saying, let it go. You say, but Pastor, I didn't. Uh, uh, uh. He's saying, let it go. Hold out your right hand and say anything. Now hold out your left hand and say anyone. You got any more hands? No. But then you won't have any room to hold any unforgiveness. Because he's called you to forgive anything and anyone. Take it out your pocketbook. <laughs> anything and anyone. And you know what that qualifies us for? Who can enter into the hill of the Lord? except he that has clean hands and a pure heart. And if we take forgiveness out of our hands and put it in the hands of Jesus, it can never enter our heart. Who can enter except he that has clean hands and a pure heart? freedom. It's 
starts here. Thank you, Dre. I don't know where you are, but can we go to A flat? This is what I hear. My storage is empty. God is calling us to empty it out. And I am available to you. That's what forgiveness does. It, it frees everything that we've been storing. All of the years, aren't you tired of holding it? Aren't you tired of fighting it? Aren't you tired of it weighing you down and causing you to be restless and causing your body to tense up when their name comes up and you're, you to react when you see the my story? It's empty. And I am. I'm available to you. Oh, my will I give. I'll do what you say. I'll forgive. Use me, Lord, to show someone the way and enable me to say. My story is empty. Can we say it again? My story. That's a good place for you to pour it out at his feet right there. My story. All of the brokenness and bitterness and anger and hurt and despair. All that I've been holding, God, I pour it out. Oh yeah, my storage is empty. Father, my storage is empty as it is. Father, I give it to you, all of the hurt, all of the generational hurt, all of the pain inside, I give it to you. I give it to you. Father, I release them tonight by faith. Vengeance is yours, saith the Lord, you will repay. Sometimes that repayment looks like mercy. Sometimes his vengeance looks like grace. That's what it looked like on me. He repaid me with mercy and his grace. He repaid me with his blood and he washed me clean. My storage is empty. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. And I am available. Yeah, I'm available. You might be here tonight and you're saying, I need to know this forgiveness of the Lord. And you may not know him. And what they say, the pardon of your sin. That just means you might know, you might not know that God has forgiven you through his son, Jesus Christ, by your acceptance of him. And you may be here tonight under this tent and saying, what must I do to know that Jesus? All he says is, listen, just accept my vengeance gift. And that is, for by grace are you saved through faith. Not of works, lest any man should boast, but it is a gift of God. And tonight, he wants you to accept that gift. If you're here tonight and you need to be saved, I just want to invite you from where you are to meet us here at this altar. Maybe you need to rededicate your life. Maybe you need to rededicate your life. And you're saying, you know what? That's me. I walked with the Lord, and I realized he's never left me nor forsaken me. But you know what? He didn't leave me. I left him. But tonight I want to return. If that's you and you need to recommit your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, 
we want to invite you down. There's some altar workers here. They want to pray with you. Some ministers, they want to they want to touch and agree with you. They want to believe God, not only for you, but with you. Maybe you're here tonight and you're saying, I need somebody to pray with me because I've been struggling. I've been holding on to this unforgiveness. I thought it was forgiven, but I found out it's only been suppressed. Suppression is just simply me hiding it in a place that's not as visible. But tonight, God is saying, I want to free you. I want to free you from the weight of unforgiveness. I want to free you from the burden of carrying that weight and that responsibility. God says, I can handle it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm going to pull up on you. Some of us, we've got unforgiveness in our heart towards God. Because he didn't give us the thing that we thought we deserved. You thought you deserved the job. You thought you deserved that man. You thought you deserved that woman. You thought you deserved that child. You thought you deserved. And God is saying, listen, and you're angry and bitter with God. God is trying to get you to release that unforgiveness tonight. Some of us are angry and unforgiving because of what mama and daddy did for that one but didn't do for us. And so now we don't fool with our own sins. We don't talk to them like that. I don't deal with my family like that. It's unforgiveness. And God is saying, I need you to release it tonight. But you don't know what mama did to me. You don't know what daddy did to me. They put me out or they took care of this one but wouldn't take care of what I needed. God is saying, listen, when your mother, your father forsake you, I'll take you up. The Lord will take you up. God says, I got it. Some of us, we're dealing with the hurt and the pain of loss. We're angry, we're bitter, we're unforgiving with God because they're no longer here. God, they were the only somebody that loved me. They were the only somebody that cared for me. Why did you take them? God is saying you've got to let it go tonight. Father, I'm available to you. Father, free me from what I think I deserve. Free me from entitlement, Lord. My story is empty. And I am available to you. Father, move by your power and your spirit now. We thank you, Lord. 
atmosphere is open. As Pastor Gray, as our younger brother was talking, if there's a person that came up in your mind while he was talking, while he was ministering, I need you to bring that to the altar. Some of you got a picture of somebody in your mind. And if you had a picture of somebody in your mind, then that's something that you need to deal with. If there's a picture in your mind of somebody, you need to deal with that person. You need to deal with that. So I want you to come. For some of you, you're thinking that your marriage is too far gone. You're thinking that your relationship is too far gone. But I promise you, God is willing to forgive. One of the reasons why we don't forgive it's because of our pride. It's because of our pride. And if that's you, I need you to let it go. 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 I held unforgiveness towards somebody for six years. They had been dead for six years and I was still holding on unforgiveness towards them. And see, the flesh will keep you longer than you want to be kept and take you further than you want to go. But if that's you, let it go. We've already had some come. He can be your marriages. We've already seen it.
Father, we thank you for the freedom tonight. Thank you that our brothers and sisters are getting free. Thank you for the liberty tonight. Thank you for the chains being broken. Father, we thank you that the captive is being set free. You're setting at liberty all who are bound. Yes, you are. struggled um, with coming up here with this one um, but what is the use of being in his presence and being quote unquote in him as a believer and not being free so I hear him saying there is at least one and maybe many that the unforgiveness that you are feeling is due to abortion and it has left you um, in a place of torment. The enemy has been able to torment you in unforgiveness. And I know that in this culture that we're in, it's really a hot topic. And that there's a lot of shame associated with it. But the sun has come to set you free. I didn't want to come up here and say this one. I struggled, but I fear God more. Hallelujah. So if that's you, young or old, the Lord is here to free you. And you know whether that's you. You know whether that's you. You allow the Lord to deal with that. The altar is open. But he wants to free you from shame. Free you from guilt. Free you from from bitterness and it was birthed through the unforgiveness of life that was taken and he's here to forgive you but you got to offer that up to him there's no shame here there's no there's no judgment here you're standing before a beautiful God that's looking at you saying bring me your pain bring me your shame let me let me deal with that because there's been years of suffering as a result of that. And I speak freedom to you now. And in your boldness, you're going to see a liberty hit your life. Because the enemy wanted you to stay silent and be ashamed. Hallelujah. But this is your night and freedom is hitting your life like never before. Father, I pray and I thank you now. For the liberty that's hitting my sister's life. Because, because God, she pressed despite opinions. She depressed. She pressed despite the enemy's lies. And I thank you, Lord, that he can no longer torment her. He can no longer, Lord, come against her mind, come against her emotions. I thank you, Lord, that she's free. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you for freedom tonight. Hallelujah. Yay, God. Thank you for freedom. Hallelujah. We glorify you for the freedom of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you for freedom tonight. Thank you for the chains being broken tonight. Thank you for the Spirit of God freeing tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's bless God for breakthrough. Let's bless God for freedom tonight. I believe if we all be to bless God, I believe if we all begin to glorify God, that chains have to be broken. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Oh, 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 oh. Father, we glorify your name. We glorify your name. Thank you for the freedom, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you that breakthrough is here. Thank you that freedom is here. Thank you that breakthrough is here. Thank you that freedom is here. Oh, Father, we glorify you tonight. God, we glorify you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, Father, as they're being freed, Father, we pray for the waters of refreshing. God, send the waters of refreshing. Send the waters of restoration. We speak your word of Isaiah, God. For everything that sin stole, for every ounce of shame, your word says that you would give them double. Father, we pray double joy, double the amount of peace, double the anointing, double God increase, double favor. Father, we pray double over their lives. Let the waters of refreshing, send 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 the winds of restoration. Restore now, God. Restore now, God. Restore now, God. Strengthen, God. Strengthen, God. Strengthen and restore. Heal and deliver. Strengthen and restore. Heal and deliver. Heal and deliver. Strengthen and restore. Heal and deliver. Strengthen and restore. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Do it again, God. Do it again, God. Do it again, God. Oh, Father. Thank you for your freedom. Thank you for your freedom. Yes, Lord. Flow, river, flow. Flow, river, flow. Flow, river, flow. Let the river of God flow in their lives. Let the river of God flow in their direction. If you need it, jump in the river tonight. If you need freedom, jump in the river. If you need healing, jump in the river. If you need deliverance, jump in the river. The river of God is flowing tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh God, we trust you, we trust you, we trust you. Oh, we trust you, we trust you, we trust you. Father, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Yes, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Yes, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Father, we trust you, we trust you, we trust you. Oh, we thank you, we thank you. Oh, oh God, we thank you, we thank you. We bless you, we bless you. We bless you, we bless you. We bless you, we bless you. We glorify your name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God. Father, we glorify you. We thank you tonight. Hallelujah for the freedom. Thank you 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 for the freedom. Where your freedom is, there's peace. Thank you for newfound peace tonight. God, somebody's been tormented so long with the memory of that thing. But thank you tonight. Thank you for peace tonight. Thank you for peace tonight. Thank you for peace tonight. Peace in their mind, God. Peace in their heart, God. Peace in their body tonight. Thank you, God, for peace. Thank you for peace. 
thank you for peace. Uh, oh God, with your freedom there's rest. Uh, somebody hasn't been sleeping, but tonight the Father says, uh, you'll experience rest uh, because of my freedom. You'll experience rest uh, because of the freedom of the Lord. Um, thank you for rest. Uh, thank you for regulating sleep patterns. Uh, thank you for rest tonight. Uh, thank you for rest tonight. Uh, oh God, he's freeing from anxiety tonight. Uh, anxiety and depression uh, be broken now uh, by reason of the anointing. Uh, be broken now. Uh, anxiety and depression. Uh, oh Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Spirit of fear be broken now. Thank you for the freedom tonight. Yeah, God, yeah, God, yeah, God. Yeah, yeah God, yeah, God, yeah, God. Thank you for the freedom tonight. Woo, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, 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 Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. A new yes. A freed yes. A delivered yes. A broken through yes. Thank you for allowing us to break through tonight. Thank you for the freedom of God tonight. Yes, God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you for the freedom. Oh. Minister Tom shared something with me as we were praying. And he said, unforgiveness is the only thing that poisons the vessel that holds it. And the Holy Spirit showed me a step further, thankful for my medical wife, that when we hold unforgiveness, our bodies become septic. And we get what they call sepsis. And that's when the body starts attacking itself. And we start fighting our own bodies as if it's a disease. And what should be fighting for you starts fighting against you. But I thank God tonight for the freedom of God. Hallelujah. Yeah, thank you. Can somebody rejoice tonight? For the freedom of God. Hey, God. Rejoice for breakthrough tonight. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you, God. I believe this is tent meeting worthy. It says, I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. No longer bound, no more chains holding me. My soul is resting, just a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Come on, lift your sanctified voice tonight and say, I'm free. Lord, I'm free, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, more chains holding me, soul is resting, thank you for soul rest, it's just a blessing, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free, praise the Lord, praise Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Won't you make that your declaration tonight? Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. Yeah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, 
I'm free. Now can we give God a free people praise tonight? Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you for freedom. We thank you for the freedom of the Lord tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm so grateful for God's presence. It sure ain't about a feeling, but I sure am glad we serve a God that you can feel. <laughs> and every now and then, it's just good to feel better, ain't it? Oh, my God. If the enemy had his way, we'd have been destroyed a long time ago. But thanks be unto God, who has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to be obedient and turn this to whomever I'm supposed to turn it to, Pastor. Sometimes right in the middle of things, I hear some stuff and I struggle with it, and I, but I know it's God. But I keep hearing, this is some bull crap. Why do I, why I got to be the one to do it? You know, I was sitting in the classroom with one of my students and they started singing a song or they started rapping a song. And the song goes, it's cool when they do it. It's a problem when I do it. Now, the next part of the lyrics is a little bit gross because he said an F word, but right in the middle of that, when I heard him saying it instantly, God said, forgive him to me. And I had to begin the process of forgiving the person. I'm telling you, forgiveness is more for you than it ends for anybody. And so God said, tonight we wrestle. See, the thing I love about God is that he's more concerned with your long-term destiny than your short-term comfort. Sometimes a word or some words, because y'all y'all know this was a volleyball setup from, that, from yesterday. But sometimes a word will come back and catch you right in the middle of your circumstances because what God wants to do is change your mind and change your direction. I'm telling you, there are some things that God wants to release. But if we're holding on to the old stuff, we're holding on to it. We'll never, ever get to see what God has for us. And I'm telling you what God has for us is greater than anything we could ever possibly hold on to. It's an act of worship to give it up to him. What kind of a God would take all of our foolishness and see it as an offering to him? All of our hurts, all of our pains, all of our disappointments, our failed marriages, our this, our that, our whatever it is, all of our mistakes. Some of us haven't forgiven ourselves either. And I'm telling you, God is waiting. Freedom is a wonderful thing. Amen. And so we honor the Lord on today. Thank you. Thank you for being obedient to what God has said. Amen. 
See, the funny thing about God that I love is God knows how to give you a word. And it's specific. It's specific. I'm talking about he sent, there's truth there when he said he sent his word to heal our disease. And so we honor the Lord on today. Thank Bethel Worship Center for a second. And thank all of the churches around. Pastor Michael, we got some good churches, y'all. We got Pastor Van, we got some good churches. Somebody said I'm probably one of the weirdest pastors they've ever seen. They said I would preach and respond to my own altar call. But I keep under my body and I pull it into subjection. Lest by any means, after I preach to others and get them into the kingdom, I ain't gonna find myself a castaway. But I'm glad I got a church who won't judge me when I hear a word from one of our ministers and I respond to the altar call. They pray for me and we keep it moving and I don't have to hear about it anymore the kind of God that we serve. Waymaker. Hallelujah. Won't he do it? I just told him don't start up again now. <laughs> My God. Mm, 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 mm. Let's give God some praise for tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. Who, Father? Mm, 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 mm. Pastor Darnell Gray, PDG. You come back to Virginia and cut up again? Didn't he? <laughs> but you paved the way, brother. <laughs> I just wanted to say this really quick. Um, you all know what's going on tomorrow and Sunday, so please come back. We really, really want to see you. Invite others, definitely. But Pastor Bryant, um, I believe you've heard this a couple of times, but there's one word that God keeps speaking, and that is trailblazer trailblazer that you are setting the the way that you are trail you are blazing the path you are you are uh, pushing through some of the hard places and you so that other people can benefit so that other people can come behind you you are setting it forth hallelujah Hallelujah. And, and Pastor Darnell, somehow on my phone, I don't know where it is or how it is, but I got a notification that revivalist Darnell Gray was coming. So the word that I heard was revivalist, and that you are one that revives people. Ooh, Shambhara people who may be in a dead place, that God has anointed you to revive them, to pull them from their dead places, and to pour into them his spirit. And I believe on tonight that is what we saw. There's some people tonight who have been revived. There's some people tonight who have come alive. There's some people tonight who have been resurrected from a dead place because you allow God to use you. So God, we pray that you pour back into him everything that he has poured out on tonight, that he may walk 
according to what you have called him to walk in and that he may stay humble before our God. We bless you, God, and we praise you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm not closing, but there is a part of my closing whenever we bless the saints. I'm not the one to close tonight, so I don't think we're leaving just yet. We got a few more church minutes. But the Lord gave me a revelation. Sometimes when I pray and I'll close, or most of the time, I'll say, may your enemies come at you one way, but flee in seven. But then the Lord showed me something in my prayer time. And he says, but because it's not his will that anyone should perish, I pray that your enemies would repent, get a revelation of who God is, and come back and worship with you. That is the type of God that we serve. That is the type of God that we serve. He's a restoration God. I'm going to turn it back over to Pastor's Van. Pastor Van, thank you for being a rock. Thank you, Pastor Van. Thank you for being a rock. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Have you tasted and seen that he's good? Hallelujah. He's an awesome God and worthy to be praised. We want to just give you an opportunity to sow into good soil, good ground. This ministry here, it is good ground. The word, everything that they will receive, they're going to use it to give it back out, to tell others. This good news that we've heard tonight, others need to hear it. So we ask you, when, when we leave here, there's not going to be an offering plate, but there will be some baskets as you leave out. Give as the Lord has prompted you to give. Give from your heart and give it cheerfully. May I just pray over this offering as you you know, as we're going, it's already blessed when you release it. So if you just bow your heads. Father God, we just bless you. Father God, we praise you for this night, oh God. We thank you because you have given us seed, oh God. And we're going to give, as your word say, you give seed to the sower. So Father, tonight we're going to sow back into your work, oh God, that others will be compelled and others will hear this good news. Bless now the offerings, O oh God, that will come forth in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, sir. Praise God. I'm grateful uh, tonight. Can we just celebrate God for who he is? But I'm grateful um, just for the goodness of the Lord. Um, I'm, I'm grateful uh, just for what God does and how God does it. Uh, <laughs> uh, Pastor Herman knows full well how, how the Lord works uh, just kind of with us. And uh, I'm, I'm grateful and part of my nervous and had to go to the bathroom and come back minister Tom because as I was sitting there Holy Spirit changed the message from what I had prepared and I was like Lord <laughs> okay I prepared something else about forgiveness and the Lord said no and I said oh Lord Jesus and so I said Father I trust you and it just so I'm grateful because uh, now I see my God is sovereign and does what he does and so I'm grateful and always trust him Always trust the Lord. I don't want to belabor the point tonight. We're going to go home. Hallelujah. If we could stand on our feet one more time. Again, I'm grateful for all of you God's people. Thank you, Bethel. Uh, just one of the most amazing churches this side of heaven. Amen. With some of the most amazing leaders. 
this side of heaven. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thankful uh, for Big Brother who preached last night and made tonight easy. It was it was a tip dunk. He threw me a good alley. All I had to come through and just boom. So I'm grateful, grateful, thankful for Pastor's Van and all of the other pastors in the building tonight. Thank you. Thank you uh, just for your willingness to minister and, and not be silo ministries. Uh, but God has called us to be communal. It's a community, a fellowship of believers. Sometimes we miss that. That's one of the disciplines of our faith is fellowship. Um, that we, the Bible says, be affectionate and kind one to another. Can't do that without it. We're thankful uh, also. In September, y'all, well, there's going to be another tent revival. Pastor White, will you raise your hand? Wave at it. Yes, or Pastor White. They're going to be having another meeting. There's going to be a meeting. <laughs> Some of y'all too young to know about the mighty clouds. <laughs> but I'm grateful. Uh, let's look to the Lord. Our Father and our God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard, our hearts have received. But most of all, what our spirits have encountered, and that is you. Father, we declare to the only wise God be glory, be majesty, dominion, and power both now and forever. I pray for your people that the hardest decision they have to make this week is who to bless with how you bless them. I speak over their lives, Psalm 65 and 11, that you have crowned their year with your goodness and your cart overflows with plenty in their direction. We bless you and honor you. Thank you for keeping us safe as we depart from this place and go our various ways and destinations. We come against every accident, incident, and occurrence. We bind mechanical failures. We thank you that when we return to our various places of rest, that all will be well and better than we left it because you've gone before us. In Jesus' name, we thank you and we count it done. Amen. Be blessed and know that with God all things are possible. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Can I ask a simple request? Well, it's not really simple, but men of God, I need you. When we first